And we're live. Uh, hey, Kadaf Online, it's really great to be here. Um, I'm Jess Knatzer. I'm founder of Studio As We Are, and we are presenting our Her Visions Time Studio As We Are booth for Kadaf Online, the virtual art fair. We have 13 uh, global artists who all work in new media. And um, yeah, we're all gonna talk about the work and present everything that's going on in our booth. Um, so Studio As We Are really quickly is a concept studio and we're dedicated to the digital art community and we do a lot of cultural programming initiatives and special projects to make our mission a reality. And then uh, my co-curator Zeba is here. I'm gonna let her chat about her vision. Thanks, thanks Jess. Um, yeah, my name's Zeba Jabbar. I'm founder of Her Visions. Her Visions is a uh, femme-focused, multidisciplinary curatorial agency. Um, I'm focused uh, have a, with a strong focus uh, on the intersections of art, technology, and culture. And I uh, partner and collaborate to create innovative uh, commissions and projects. Um, yeah, um, we're really excited to introduce an amazing selection of artists um, working with digital media um, for our collaboration with Infinite Objects. And so, yeah, we're going to pass it over to, to, to these wonderful people and um, let, let them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their work and their practice uh, and then also their piece that they've done for, for Infinite Objects. So I'll hand it over to Sibeli to start. So yeah, if you can just introduce yourself and yeah, it's, it's, all, it's such a pleasure to have you all here as well. And thank you for joining. Yeah, you, yeah. I mean, the, yeah, the work, like the, the pieces look amazing. Very excited to, to have you as part of this um, first collection that we've, we've worked on, so. I'll let you Thank take you over. Having... <laughs> Thank you for having me amongst all this really great artists. It's a really interesting initiative as well as the Infinite Object. Um, my name is Sibeli Cavalivarto. <laughs> the pronouns are they and them. And I have a practice that's very much of the access, like the Venn diagram of the expanded field of everything. It's not so much bound to a specific medium, it's more um, to do with subjective consistency rather than formal consistency. So I largely work, you know, based on, uh, on research through art practice. And I work with uh, the theme of deep programming, so looking into our patterns of behavior and the ways that identity are is constructed, perceived, deconstructed, and all these things. And I've been specifically within deprogramming looking at um, the, the conflation of femphobia, platform capitalism, and how that like really keeps a fertile ground for systemic oppression, for patterns of behavior to continue repeating themselves, ad infinitum through um, for example, the instance of artificial uh, intelligence, machine learning. So with that, they program anti-racist practices as well. And then for that, <laughs> then all this has uh, has an output, has, a, has an output that's in the field of art or business. So there's digital output, there's like very physical, like, you know, pieces, um, installation work, sound. But really, I like using life as material and, and the, let's say, the platforms that we have. So instead of just working interdisciplinarily, work interplatform as well. And so for the past three years, the body of work I've been working the most with is Avatar Perform. So my, Insta my Instagram account is actually a piece uh, of the field of performance, which is actually an anti-performance. So it's where I've been sharing my own process of deprogramming and insights about this. And so my intra-political work, hoping that this non-political action of being there in that, in that uh, sense of anti-performance and constant like vulnerability and sharing thoughts and really actively working through deprogramming myself from white supremacist cis heteronormative society <laughs> and carving out paths for non-binary feminism. So this is what I've been doing. And this piece, specifically, Freedom is Not Free, it's a piece that's been going around because um, I have a, a body of work that's mainly phrases and then they go in different mediums across time until they fulfill their mission, let's say. So first I had Freedom is Not Free. I started this 
um, give was I think 2013 when this messages from WhatsApp started circulating in Brazil, all the motivational memes uh, circulating the right wing, you know, so kind of like being flushed into uh, WhatsApp groups uh, of families and facilitating this process of brainwashing through aesthetics. And so there's a lot of words, you know, every day in the morning in a, you know, in a WhatsApp group, you know, from your family, you get this good morning, hope, or, um, peace, freedom, and these words being over again and completely losing their meaning whilst being like injected through very infantilized um, aesthetics and kind of, in a way, it's even like an anti-aesthetic to whatever, let's say, we would find cool, let's say, you know, like boomer aesthetics. And um, and so I made this with the with the with the with the phrase freedom is not free because freedom has been thrown around and got kidnapped by the right wing and the white supremacists and like it's Trump's motto for election is also not his motto. So it's like all in the banner of banner of freedom, a lot of things, a lot of violence has been happening under the under the banner of freedom, but like freedom for whom then, you know? So I don't know if I'm we're already running out of time. I could read a short text. Uh, that I wrote about freedom here from this. Um, hey, I mean, but, I <laughs> sorry, Sibeli. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, just to say, I like, all in all, <laughs> no, just to say one last phrase, like, all in all, freedom is not free, is like, free, like, freedom itself as a concept is not free, it doesn't come for free, it's absolutely held hostage, and in order to get free and to facilitate the freedom of people that are under a lot of violence and oppression, we have to really work on our subconscious and see where, you know, we are operating as a pattern that's unquestioned. Because whilst we are operating like this, while we're not with full agency, we are absolutely not free, we are absolutely controlled, and so this work is about this. Thank you very much. Yay. Thank you. Okay, well, that's uh, next up is Clara. So, Clara, would you like to just introduce yourself, please? And okay. um, hi, guys, it's great to meet all of you. Uh, super happy to be exhibiting alongside everyone here. I'm a uh, CG artist and recently just become also an animation director, um, specializing in character animation, uh, character modeling, character grooming. So just like a very heavy like CG 3D background. Um, and this piece that I, I have here, this dragon, is from uh, a, series, a series of characters designed to accompany uh, heroes, um, from, uh, which I did with a, a friend who did uh, She did the human work and I did the creature uh, work. And I, I specialize most, mostly also in pictures. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in uh, character design as a practice, how to move outside of filmmaking. It originally comes from um, animated filmmaking and now it's moved into lots of other areas, such as like digital avatars, um, into robot therapy, into um, all kinds of avenues that basic that are outside of how the how it was like what it was originally designed for. So. Um, I'm pretty, I, I love to, to work with character design and to use it in all these new avenues and yeah, I just hope to keep, keep working and doing that. Um, I'm going to keep it short because I feel like there's lots of us to go through, so I'm going to finish there. But uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Clara. Thank so you. next up, Eva. <laughs> <laughs> Who's oh, audio. So, my name is Eva Papa Margariti. I'm a digital artist. Uh, my practice focuses on moving image, uh, but also printed material and sculptural installations that explore the relationship between digital space and material reality. Um, I am interested in, in the creation of scenarios that uh, provoke narrations that are based on the uh, simultaneous situations that happen uh, on the verge of, of digital and physical environments. Uh, and uh, my, my work delves into issues and themes related to simultaneity, my, uh, the 
the dissolving and merging of our surroundings with the virtual, as well as the symbiotic procedures and entanglement that take place between humans, nature, and technology. For the Infinite Objects project, I created a loop that is called Rapturous Moment and is a fragment, it's an expert excerpt uh, based on a sequence taken from a recent video that I created. Uh, the video is called, but for now all I can promise is that things will become weirder. And it's a combination of CG animated sequences, text, sound, and filmed extracts that addresses the, the ambiguous sense of numbness that is provoked by uh, the current stream um, and rhythm of reality. Uh, the fact that, for example, information and events are perceived and absorbed uh, as a palimpsest of fabricated fragment of implicated fragments, uh, images and sounds that are floating between uh, uh, blurred boundaries among politics, uh, uh, society, um, pop culture, for example, uh, creating thus a paradoxical am amalgam of extravagance and often an uncanny feeling. Um, I think that was pretty much. Thank you. Hey, Ines. Thank you very much. Hey, my turn. Uh, uh, so uh, nice to meet you all. If I haven't said that already, I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Really happy to be part of this project. It's super cool to see our videos in like a small canvas. And I dreamt about how it was about a, an easier way to sell digital art. And it's, I think it's a good way. So it's, um, I mean, it's a good experimentation at least because I haven't seen it for real. I mean, in the physical world. Uh, so yeah, so um, I'm a digital artist. I specialized in what I've called 3D makeup. Uh, so it's makeup, but using digital software. So basically it's, um, I add 3D elements on faces, like you could add any kind of physical makeup. So, um, uh, mascara, eyeshadows, but using digital tools. So I just like take 3D stuff and add it on the face and then it's, it's 3D makeup. Um, and um, so for, for this project, uh, as it, it, it started during quarantine, I was at the time uh, experimenting with new software and with a plugin that Cinema 4D um, created, launched recently that uh, tracks the face with, um, with the camera of the phone uh, and that you can ex import directly into Cinema 4D. So for me, it was like super uh, advanced. I mean, not advanced, but like it, it's a life, uh, life game changer. I don't know what's the best word to, to explain that, uh, but it's, it, it can save me a lot of time because usually I do the face tracking manually when I do post-production. So I was experimenting with that and basically I took a video of myself with my phone and then I had my face moving in that and floating in that software. So I thought it looked super cool. And I, as it was like the quarantine coronavirus and all, and I was like, I say like a lot, that's, that must be terrible to hear. Um, uh, so I decided to create design face mask to protect your digital avatar um, from viruses. Uh, and so I created three designs. And for this uh, special project, I, uh, I took one of the design and I changed the, the colors a bit and I changed it a little bit to make it more special to, for, for this project. So here you have this human tentacle person made from my face um that has a, a mask with tentacle moving with the face movement and uh, i guess that those tentacles are capable of protecting the face um protecting the, the body maybe it has a filter in it 
and that the, the virus can't go through, um, can't go inside your body in that digital space where, where there are viruses, but they are different than the, the COVID, obviously. So uh, yeah, basically that's, that's it. But that's what I did, that's what I am. Thank you, Inez. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, love it. Uh, Molly, uh, you are up next. Hi, hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, I'm uh, Molly Soda. Uh, I am an artist working mostly across digital mediums, but sometimes I make uh, physical like installation works as well. Um, and my work is really concerned with um, sort of how we portray ourselves online as well as how we interact with each other and how the internet sort of mediates that and creates its own host of problems. So um, often I'm using myself in my work. Um, I'm also kind of mining from old uh, interactions that I've had online in my work and sort of reworking them into new things. Um, so I'm really interested in archives and sort of like digital clutter and hoarding and the desktop space and recording um, sort of these like background spaces that we don't always uh, think about. Um, and so for this particular piece, this is a segment from a video that I made in 2018 uh, called New Profile Pick. And in the video I'm taking, it's sort of a screen recording of my phone um, taking selfies in the mirror. And I was just sort of thinking about um kind of every time you take a selfie it sort of joins this like sea of selfies and everything we upload online becomes sort of this like really flattened um file essentially and then displaying these sort of like really flattened like women on top of it um which sort of feature themselves a lot in my work um and them sort of being all in conversation together as these really like 2d objects that kind of just get lost when you dump things online. Um, and then the title is new profile pic, which is a hashtag that if you like look through, there's just like a sea of um, like every second someone posting a new uh, photo of themselves. So about it. Awesome, very cool. Thank you for sharing. Uh, and Kachi, do you wanna go ahead? Forgot to unmute. unmute. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, hi everyone. My name is Nkechi Ebubedike. Um, I'm a multidisciplinary artist working across many different kinds of media, mo mostly collage, collage in painting, collage in sculpture, and uh, collage in video, which is, um, I guess, why I was included amongst all of you. <laughs> Um, and I'm happy to be included in this project. So thank you very much to Jess um, and Zainab, uh, Zeba, sorry. <laughs> so uh, basically the series that uh, I've been working on called Shiny New Things, this uh, piece that I'm presenting with um, infinite objects is called um, Blue Vision, which is an excerpt of a larger piece called Shiny New Things. And it began as a project um, sort of inspired by my mom's preoccupation with uh, buying and selling things on auction websites on the internet. And um, because of her background, she's uh, Nigerian American. Uh, a lot of the things that she was selling was sort of reminiscent to me of um, culturally how Nigerian Americans tend to um, it adorn the body with things that are shiny and reflective or how Western capitalist societies are um, sort of drawn to and sort of encourage people to um, think more about the external rather than the internal. So uh, 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 this small excerpt piece is a collage that uh, is put together from found objects and from found video and from my own personal videos that I've taken while I was shopping and um, sort of collaged them together into this uh, short piece that's sort of reminiscent of maybe watching uh, QVC 
or, or whatever home shopping channel you get on television. So each of the um, small sculptures that I've created and collaged into each of the um, videos is reminiscent of that. So that's just a short explanation. Cool. Um, okay, so we have uh, Anar um, next, I believe. Hi, it, it looked like I'm clapping for myself, but that wasn't my intention <laughs> at all. I was clapping for Nkechi. That's wonderful to be here and um, meeting this very sharp and highly creative group. Uh, thank you, Zaiba and Jessica, for organizing this. What really um, impresses me is that it's not just an art project, but uh, you're building a community here, and I really appreciate that. I think this is very important, especially uh, looking at what's been happening in the past weeks, right? Um, so this is great. Um, I come from a very academic background and I actually never really studied art and I'm an architect by training. I have a bunch of master degrees and I did my PhD on art and neuroscience, uh, which was the final stop. And currently I'm a professor at UC San Diego. So I'm hailing from California, which is totally not sunny today. It's been very gray and cloudy the past week. Don't ask me why. So uh, I actually want to just um, say this out loud first. I would like to invite you digitally uh, or I hope perhaps physically at some point in the future uh, to join our classes and perhaps for artist uh, talks, etc. Like all of you, I think are ridiculously interesting people and you're doing amazing work. So let's definitely stay in touch. Uh, so I have that thing going on. Uh, but um, the project that I contributed uh, is uh, part of my genetically modified God series. Um, as I said, I'm an architect by training, but I have this uh, long interest in modifying living organisms. So I think my first really truly feminist works was designing genitalia. So I designed what I called neolobium, which was an exaggerated female organ, which you would show off, like you wouldn't hide it. I, I designed penises and I designed creatures with like multiple mammary glands, which I called super mammals. So that was like way back, like 14, 15 years ago. And I was sculpting them by hand. So what I do is I sculpt by hand and then I move it to the digital platform. And following that uh, organ design, I started thinking about designing the next human, right? What would, what would uh, be uh, the next, um, you know, uh, iteration on human? How would human desires, collective ambitions would be reflected upon what we ask of the next human. So what you're seeing in the background is one of these like genetically modified humans. It's, he's called Borea. And his uh, spiel is that he can live longer. Obviously, that's the thing, right? Longevity. Um, I thought about other characters that could fit for this project. But um, with this one, I used a Latin phrase called Ars Longa Vita Brevis which has stayed with me for as long as I think I learned about this phrase when I was like 18 or something. And I thought, oh, that's cool. Because it translates to art lives, life is short, art is long, right? But um, art, you can take it as in a literal sense, just like painting or sculpting, but it could be something deeper, which I think brings all of us together here. Like we're thinkers, we're makers, but there's a lot of like philosophical inquiry, ideological, you know, resistance that goes into our work. So I thought that in the midst of this turmoil, remembering that life is short and art is long is something cool to do. And it made sense to put this sign on my character that would live forever because that it could just rotate, you know, uh, for eternity. Um, I know there is a lot of people in this group, so I'm going to keep it short, but I hope to continue the conversation in other platforms. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Rory, we've got you next. Can you hear me now? Okay. Hi, I'm Rory, and thank you, Jess and Zaiba, for having me be a part of this. This is really exciting, and um, I can't wait to see the final product in person. Um, 
my work is all over the place. I'm a multidisciplinary artist. I do photography, I do animation. Um, I'm very much interested in working in AR and VR currently. I want to transport people into another space, another world that ordinarily they wouldn't be able to go to, whether it be the universe, the inner workings of the mind, or something that's like microscopic. Um, my work is like uh, something that I kind of have to have like a bullet point list to describe because there's so many things that are interwoven into it, thinking about transhumanism, thinking about um, repetition and how that plays out like in terms of like visually and also like the pattern in our own lives and like thinking about like how one small little thing that you do repeatedly consistently over time yields a form and how powerful that can be and how I think that a lot of us kind of don't really grasp that and days can just pile up and go by and like you could have made a significant change so that's something that I'm very interested in exploring and trying to connect with people on. Um, this piece here um, is kind of like out of my frustration of like being stuck inside and I love going to the museum, my kids love going and you know we haven't really been able to do that and I start thinking about the Art Institute and there's this room of um, paperweights and it's like the most magical place. It's like I go in there and I want to like lick everything because it's like all glossy and like there's beautiful light and there's like these just really amazing intricate pieces that you just want to dive into and of course there's no way to really do that so with this piece I want to create something that really bend it would bend light bend form and make it seem like something that is like you really want to touch and you want to be inside of so yeah that's pretty much it Thank you, Rory. Uh, Sabrina, it's, uh, you're up next. Hi, everyone. Very nice to be here with all of you. Some of you, I already know their work and we've had a chance to meet too. Uh, it's really great. And I agree with, with what has been said that uh, actually this kind of conversation is really uh, interesting to have and uh, to, to meet all of you. It's really great. Um, so just to talk a little bit about my practice, uh, I really come from a film production background, uh, but then uh, started working with uh, video as it was more natural for me. And uh, so I was really obsessed at, the, at some point about uh, early video artists and pioneers in computer art. Uh, those people have been like my uh, mentor, my professor, like my teachers. Uh, so I started working a lot with analog technologies, video synthesizer, video feedback, and then eventually got more and more fascinated by architecture and this idea of like uh, uh, being into a space and what it means to be into a space, how it affects our mood, how uh, actually, um, what's the emotion we have inside architectural space, which is for me is some is very abstract and also very powerful. Uh, and it's something that I've been more and more inclined to, to, to describe into my work. So, and that's how I got into also 3D animation, because then uh, it gave me this opportunity to create more complex spaces and really explore architecture, which I've never had any class in it. architecture. I'm really um, uh, amateur, but uh, somehow there's like something that really attracts me uh, into this. Uh, but eventually, um, now I'm working on a new project completely different where I use my, my body, where, which uh, all in my work, there's no, no human beings. <laughs> and now for the first time, I decided to uh, explore the 3D scan of my own body and think more about uh, having more of a personal approach about how how do I experience my body in this digitized world and I started to, to read uh, a lot about um, the history of women since antiquity and like Greek mythology and all that stuff so uh, and the cyborg by uh, Donna Holloway has been a huge ins inspiration for this project but for now this is still a work in progress so for this project uh, with infinite objects and her visions, I decided to show 
uh, piece that is kind of a turning point, I would say, in all of this uh, history, if you want, and all my process, which is kind of like when I, I really started to integrate 3D animation, but you still uh, feel that uh, analog synthesizer, like that, that strange, like smoke coming up. And uh, really, I was, you know, trying to translate a space of kind of a serene landscape, but you're not sure you're inside or outside. Uh, it's more like a, a, a interior landscape or interior uh, psychological uh, architecture. And I thought it would work well with this project where uh, since it's very serene, it's a slow uh, rotation. So it could almost be seen as a painting in motion somehow. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. Um, Sam, you next. Thank you, Zeva. Can everyone hear me okay? Cool. Uh, my name is Sam Cannon. I am a video artist based in New York City. I um, most often create video collages. Um, I film myself and composite them into these worlds that I build. And um, so this piece, it's very <laughs> weather reporty you now, uh, for the piece that I have been able to make for this amazing Infinite Objects collection with you all, which I'm so excited to be a part of. Uh, I started, I, it started really thinking about kind of the overbearing weight that I was feeling from how slow time seemed to be moving forward during quarantine. And I wanted to create a piece that was a reinterpretation of you know, a, a clock or an hourglass. Um, and I, I started thinking about, um, you know, the way that our, our time, the way that we perceive it because of the time that it takes for us to orbit around our own sun and just these objects in space and more distance between them equating to longer durations of days. Uh, and so I created this piece, which is called Two Bodies in Orbit, where I filmed um, myself in a pool, um, and then composited it to create these two systems that are kind of volleying back and forth um, to make this you know, type of timekeeper that you can set on your desk um, using my own body as the substance for measuring that time going by. Um, I filmed it in a pool in Virginia when I was quarantining with my in-laws there <laughs> and then I hid in their garage for a couple of days and built it into this final um, composite. The version that you can see here in my Zoom background doesn't loop, I think because of the, the limit to the file size, um, but the final piece loops infinitely, um, which I guess is quite appropriate for infinite objects. Um, and yes, so that, is, that is this piece two bodies in orbit, and thank you all so much. Thank you, Studio As We Are, and Her Visions, and Infinite Objects. Thank you, Sam. Um, and, and last but not least, Shaima, um, would you be able to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your, about, about your piece? Please. Yeah, first, yeah, thank you, Zeva and Jess, for having me as part of this collection. You guys always put together amazing artists, so. I'm happy to be here. Um, so basically, uh, my name is Shama Golden. I tell people that Shama rhymes with llama, so helps them remember it. Um, my background is in oil painting and graphic design, uh, but basically after about a decade of working in graphic design, I kind of just got disillusioned with it and started focusing my practice on figurative art. Um, so primarily, you know, I work as an independent visual artist and um, I'm based in LA, but I've lived in, you know, Sri Lanka, New Zealand, and many different places in Texas. And um, I think a lot of these places I've lived in a way kind of like come into my work. I sort of, you know, try to think on a bigger scale sometimes or, you know, in, in terms of time and place. Um, and a lot of times I work, you know, both, both in physical uh, as in like acrylic and oil paints and I work digitally whenever I want to do like a seamless animation or a pattern. So it just depends on the concept, like whatever serves the concept better. Um, and the artwork for this collaboration, which I'll sort of put behind me, uh, the artwork for this collaboration, it was sort of like I was thinking about what would be a artifact from the future 
like what would we like just dis discover like humans would discover um far into the future and i was using a lot of influences from ancient south asian art like uh, Mughal miniature paintings and also uh, archival photographs from sri lanka for, like the very first photographs that were taken and i kind of wanted to just bring those into a new dimension and that's what the piece is and you kind of see like after a while it sort of starts glitching out and searching for the signal again and there's like a little bit of humor in it as well um but yeah that's basically that's uh the introduction to my piece i would like to keep it open so that people can interpret it the way that they feel inspired to as well thank you shama uh, thank you everyone uh, for all of your descriptions and telling us about your practice. It's really awesome to hear and uh, uh, we're so, so incredibly lucky to have all of you guys participating um, in this collection and we're excited for it to drop. Uh, or I'm really excited to collaborate with Zeva per usual. Um, our collaboration uh, really just strengthens our joint mission. Um, of creating space for digital art to exist in real life and uh, helping to cultivate support and advance voices in new media. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thank guys. you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Let's Thank try you. and do it again. Do it again. Yes. Yes, sure. Uh, cool. Yay. Thank you for all your time. Yeah. Can I, can I do 